Oh, hi. Welcome back to another episode of Black Dot Miniatures and Paints. Kevin coming to you this week with a Dark Reaper from the Eldar Army. So, I've got my glorious Space Whoops Army that is fantastic. Everybody loves it. And then I got my dirty, dirty, dirty Eldar. Dark Reapers have some awesome rules. They do some awesome heavy damage to uh, vehicles and such like that. They're definitely a good one to go ahead and put in the army. You only have to paint three models for a squad, too, so that helps. So we're going to start this dude out with a black primer and then we hit it with some FW white ink from the top down. I know it's a little confusing because we're planning a dark reaper. He needs to be dark. What's this crap? Nah, this is just an undercoat. So we lock down this ink and then we come through with Vallejo gloss coat. So I've heard horror stories that these gloss coats are the only thing that will prevent contrast paint from ripping up the ink. And we're going to be employing contrast paint to have a differentiation in the armor here. So here we're using the GW Black Templar Contrast Paint. So what apparently happens is when you start brushing this stuff on, some chemical hoodoo magic inside there just destroys the white ink, pulls it right up, doesn't leave it looking the way you want it to, and you completely lose the undercoat entirely. So make sure you take the step to go ahead and protect what you're working on. So now we're on to the edge highlighting. We're gonna go ahead and start with Eschen Gray, and all we're doing here is putting down a fat edge highlight. We don't want it too fat that it looks out of place, but we do want it reasonably thick. We want it to be a little chunky boy. So what we're gonna do is lay down this thicker edge highlight to begin with, and then we're progressively gonna go brighter and brighter while making that edge highlight more and more narrow. And what this will do is just leave it reading as black, but we're gonna have these clear defined edge highlights. One of the biggest problems with painting black models is you start really laying down the edge highlights and it starts to read more as gray, starts to read more as any other color except for black. Just take your time working around this model. It is gonna take a while. There's a lot of hard edges around this thing, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be well worth your time and effort, okay? If you want to, you could totally cheat, bust out some dry brush tech, Totally an option if you're wanting to save a little bit of time here, but it can really, again, cause it to look gray, not black. So for the first step up in our edge highlighting, we're just mixing Dawnstone into our Eschen Gray that we already had on the wet palette. Again, all we're doing is just making that line that we laid down with Eschen Gray a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner, and laying down this line of this mix we got going here. Just be careful. It, it, it is some really meticulous, precise work. It sucks. But I'm telling you folks, totally worth it. While well, I got y'all here, I just want to say thanks to everybody who watched my uh, Dreadnought video. That thing is hitting number one on my charts. It's doing the best out of any video I've ever uploaded, and that could not be the case without support from people like y'all. Support your local PBS channel. This channel is possible with viewers like you. Thank you. So the final step up on this edge highlighting madness is just Dawn Stone. We're really picking out a tiny, tiny amount here. It's not as bad as the previous two steps. We're just looking for the sharpest points. We're looking for the tightest angles where light's gonna reflect the most. We're not going through and edge highlighting this entire thing for a third time. Nah, scratch that. If light's gonna hit it and it's gonna gleam really well off that surface, that's where you wanna hit is all. So to start painting is Reaper Cannon, we're coming through with GW's Corn Red. Um, as you can tell from looking at the way this paint's going on, I've got it really thinned down, so I did have to apply two thin coats here, but it's always better to just hit that with a thin coat than try and force it, and it's gonna look chunky and have paint lines in it, that kind of stuff, so. Just be careful, don't mess up the armor we already laid down. We worked too damn hard on that, just to slap a big glob of red on there, so. That's all, be careful, otherwise we're painting by numbers at this point, we're on the downhill slope. So after we get all that base coat laid down, all we're switching to now is Army Painter Dark Tone. We're just going around the uh, around the corn red and we're laying a nice shade down on it to give it some contrast. 
make some of the uh, little vents and slots in the weapon itself actually stand out. We're also hitting his hair right here, just kind of putting some waves in it for him. For his skull, we're going through with your shabby bone to start with. It's a lot lighter than what I would normally start any skull with, but it's a very unique color and very distinctive for them. So we're starting with your shabby bone. We're going to wash it down here in a little bit. Just be really careful with this one. There's way too much black around him that could really get jacked up if you miss a brush stroke. After we've given the wash time to dry, we're just coming through with GW's Corn Red. No big deal here. We're just reestablishing the red color that is Corn Red. It gets a little muddied whenever you have all the uh, wash on top of it, so we want it to be a very nice dark red to start with. We are leaving it in some of the lower parts. We're leaving it to where light's not going to get to it, just to give it a little subtle transition, okay? Now to highlight the Repo Auto Cannon, we're coming through with Mephiston Red. This is super thin down, super glaze consistency, maybe, maybe a little bit thicker than your normal glaze, right? But all we're doing is just trying to accentuate some of the spots where the red's going to gleam the most. We're going to pick this up to another level in the next step, but this will give us a good spot to start at, and then we can make it progressively brighter. To continue pushing this highlight, we're next moving on to Evil Sun Scarlet. Again, this is super watered down. This is just a thick glaze consistency at best. And you want it to be at that level. That way, whenever you lay it down, it's going to lend itself to blending into the colors we have below it. If you have it too thick, you're going to end up with really hard transition lines on there that no one wants and really makes the paint job, you know, not pop like you want it to. Whenever we do his hair, we actually move to a little bit thicker consistency, more along the lines of paint and we just push that in that way. Easy peasy. Now thankfully there's not much lead belcher on this guy. All we're doing is grabbing the grip to his gun here and then the coil for that actual Reaper missile, we're coming through and just doing a nice edge highlight on that just to make it stand out, look a little bit different and break up the black that is right there. Now to shade that back down, we're coming through with Army Painter Dark Tone again. While we're at it, we're hitting the lead belcher that we just laid down, getting that squared away, and then anywhere on the model where we want to just reestablish some of the darker shadows that may have been lost with our contrast paint, that may have been lost with our ink. So what I'm doing is I'm focusing towards the bottom of his kneecaps, I'm focusing on his leg plates where light's not going to hit, I'm leaving our edge highlights completely alone. I don't want to touch those, I want those to be exactly the way they are, but areas that need a little bit more black put in them, we're hitting that. It, it really does help sell the effect of the black if you start to lose it. It's a good way to save a model like that. Now to keep working on the face, we're coming through with GW's Sepia Wash. It was a little thin. Um, we really, really tried to force that in there, but unfortunately with this old pewter model having several layers of paint, the detail's just kind of not there like it used to be, and I didn't strip this model beforehand. So we're just pushing that in there. Later we lean on some Xandry dust just to reestablish those dark recesses. For his little gem on his chest, we're just hitting that with a nice blue. We're starting with McCrag blue, and then we'll progressively work our way up the gem going progressively smaller with our highlights to kind of sell a gem effect. After we put that solid base coat of McCrag Blue down, we moved to the Fang. We're probably doing 50-60% eh, of the actual gemstone at this point. Now we move on to Fenrisian Gray. This is probably the top 20% uh, and then we kind of put a line jutting down towards the bottom to make it look as though light is sitting there gleaming. Next we switch to Fenrisian Gray Ceramite White and all we're doing here is putting a dot in the very very brightest point and a dot in the lowest point just to make it look like it's reflective. To keep working on the mask we come through with your Shabdi Bone again. All we're doing is trying to reestablish the color, the brightness of your Shabdi Bone and hope that the GW sepia wash left us enough. Like I said, with me, with how this model is, it didn't leave me enough. I had to come do his eyes, his nose, 
and some of the lines between his teeth with Xandru dust, it'll depend on what your model does. To highlight the skull, we're just coming through with GW's Screaming Skull. We're trying to put some edge highlights around his eyeballs, under where his cheeks are. We're also doing a line on top of his nose. We're doing his teeth down towards the bottom, just to add a little bit of variety to this. We don't want it to be just a flat, you shabby bone colored skull. We want to add a little bit of variety in there, a little bit of transition in there, and this is how we accomplish that. Now we mix a little bit of Screaming Skull and Ceramite White together. We're just pushing that highlight even further. We're trying to make the brightest brights at the hardest points on his face mask here. We're also working smaller and smaller down his actual face mask, down the teeth, around the eyes, under the cheeks, that kind of stuff. This took some time just fiddling with it to get it to look right and it's still not a thousand percent. It could be better. I could spend probably five hours into this face mask alone. So put how much work into it you're willing to do because you can get lost in the weeds on this one. To finish off the face mask, we just come through with pure ceramide white. These are essentially little dots around the face mask on the model that really just give it that finished look to it. Not totally necessary, I really got lost in the weeds playing with this and this is what ended up happening. So for the final color, we're coming through with Evil Sun Scarlet. Again, this is super glazed down. All we're doing is putting a nice highlight where light is hitting this uh, Reaper Auto Cannon at its highest points. Nothing crazy here. If you do need to go back to the previous color, it's no big deal. It's just my fist in red, and you can try again, work your way back up the model. Well, all right, guys. So as always, here's our finished product. Uh, definitely love the way the gym on his chest there turned out. I think this model turned out great. I will say I've started to notice that the more and more I practice the edge highlighting, the easier it gets. It started to get a lot easier on this model than some of the other ones that I've done in the past. So I know I complain about it, but guys, just keep pushing, keep working on it, and you'll definitely be able to get it squared away and get it all edged up and clean as hell. So again, guys, this is Kevin with Black Dot Ministries and Paints. I'm glad y'all can check me out this week. If you liked what you see here, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. Leave me a like, leave me a comment. Let, let me know what you'd like to see painted up, okay? We'll be here next week. Y'all come back and check it out. Bye for now.